Say you're asked to find the perpendicular bisector. You might also hear this referred to as a right angle bisector or the right bisector or the 90 degree bisector. They all mean the exact same thing. Most commonly though, I hear it referred to as the perpendicular bisector. So what is that? Well, it means that if you have a line, let's say you have a point A here and you have a point B here and there's a line going between those points and they ask you, find the perpendicular bisector to this. What it means is at the midpoint, which we've already covered how to find the midpoint, you have another line cutting through our original line like this at a 90 degree angle. The perpendicular bisector is the equation of that new line. So the way these questions often go is they give you points A and B. They say that's a line segment. Give me the equation of the perpendicular bisector. So all you do is find the midpoint and then find the equation of the line that's going through that point at a 90 degree angle. Now, how do we do that? Well, let's take a look at a specific example. So let's say they give you point A, and point A is at 7, 2. And they give you point B, and point B is at negative 5, 6. Okay? We can sketch this out just to help us visualize what's happening, although it's not required of us, right? So A is at 7, 2, so that would be somewhere over here, 7, 2. And then B is at negative 5, 6, so up there, something like that. And you can connect those two together just like that. So that's point A and this is point B. Where's the midpoint? The midpoint's going to be somewhere here, right? Let's use that equation we used before for the midpoint. So the midpoint's equal to the average of the x values and the average of the y values. So 7 and minus 5, right? Those are your x values over 2. And then 2 and 6. So 2 plus 6 over 2. Okay? 7 minus 5 is 2, divided by 2 is 1. 2 plus 6 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. So the midpoint is at the point 1, 4. So 1, 4. And that looks reasonable with our sketch, right? It looks to be at about 1, 4. So that's not too bad. Okay, now how do I find the equation of the line going through that at 90 degrees, right? Because that's what we're looking for. I'm looking for the equation of this line that goes through at 90 degrees. That's your perpendicular bisector. How do we find that? Well, the first thing you need to know when you're trying to come up with the equation of a line is you need the slope of the line, right? You need the slope and you also need a point, right? To do that, y equals mx plus b. You can use a slope and a point and you can come up with that equation. Uh, we covered that in last year's material. So how do I find the slope of this new line? I already have a point on the line, right? That midpoint is on this new line. It's on both, right? So that midpoint we're actually going to use, but we still need the slope. How can I find the slope of this line? Well, a little secret to know, if you have the slope of a line and then you have a line going through it at 90 degrees, those two slopes are going to be related to each other. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say we're talking about the slope of the original. The slope of the original line, A and B, right? What's that slope? Well, it's y2 minus y1, right? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or rise over run, just like we talked about, you know, last year, and, you know, we've been doing slope forever now. So y2 is 2 minus 6, just like that, and then x2 would be 7 minus negative 5, which 2 minus 6 is negative 4, 7 minus negative 5, that's the same as 7 plus 5, which is going to be 12. And negative 4 over 12 can simplify to negative a third. So the slope of the original line, BA, is negative a third. Now remember how I said the slope of this line and the slope of this line will be related? That's what I'm about to show you. So the slope of the, I'll call it the perpendicular bisector, PB, that slope is going to be the negative reciprocal. the negative reciprocal of this slope over here, negative a third. And you say, what's a negative reciprocal? A negative reciprocal is when you flip this number. So if it's a third, we're going to change it to three. And when, because it's negative, we're going to change the sign. So the negative reciprocal of negative a third would be positive three. So the slope of this new line is going to be positive three. So if, for example, you know, you have a slope that's uh, a half. The negative reciprocal of that would be negative two. If you have a slope that's five, 
the negative reciprocal of that would be negative a fifth. If you have a slope that's two thirds, the negative reciprocal would be negative three over two. Okay, those are just some examples of how you would figure out the negative reciprocal. Okay, so you just flip the number and change the sign. So that means that a line that has that slope is perpendicular or meets that 90 degrees to a line that has that other slope. Okay, that's the relationship. So now that we know what the slope of the new line is, and we have a point on the line, right, the midpoint, we can figure out the equation, right? We do y equals mx plus b. So what do we do? We plug in the slope and we plug in a point. So the slope I'm going to use is 3 because that's our slope of the new line. And then the point we can use is the midpoint, which is 1, 4. So I plug in the 1 for x, the 4 for y, and now we can solve for b. So 3 times 1 is 3. Move that to the other side, you get 4 minus 3, which is 1. So b is equal to 1. Therefore, your equation is y equals 3x plus 1. So this equation represents the perpendicular bisector to the line segment AB.